Nadia, thank you very much for joining us at High Grade. My pleasure, it's great to be here. Water comes consumption by mining, it, it's mm -hmm. small relative mm -hmm. to say agriculture. Mm -hmm. Why is water a critical issue for mining? Well, it's a really good question and I think that, that um, the small consumption of water relative to other industries is certainly something that uh, is often talked about a lot. Um, but I, I think for me the thing that find, I find most exciting about working on water issues in mining is that it doesn't matter where in the world uh, you visit a mining project, there will be a water problem. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, a lot of mines are located in regions where water is very scarce. So even though at a national scale consumption may not be large, at a local level around two thirds of the world's mining mining projects are in water scarce areas. Mm. Um, and then other mines have flooding problems. So when water is abundant, mines can have too much water, very large production losses as a result of flooding, um, and, and also kind of legacy issues around issues such as water quality management, acid rock drainage. Uh, so I think that regardless of where you are, water will be something that is absolutely crucial for the mining sector to be thinking about. Language has shifted from talking about water management to water stewardship. But what is the difference, really? Yeah, I, I like to differentiate the two in terms of the scale of the of the, the problem. So um, when I think about water management, it's more around managing water issues within the mining project. But increasingly, there's more and more pressure for the industry to think of a stewardship approach, which is really more of a regional approach to thinking about water issues. And um, with that, it comes the need for more collaboration with governments and communities than what the industry has needed to do in the past. Mm. Um, so so and and also with other companies as well. A lot of stewardship initiatives are about partnering with other com companies to address regional issues that happen because of rapid expansion of the sector in one small area. Water is a leading cause of a community conflict mm -hmm. in mining regions and many projects have been put on hold due mm -hmm. to tensions around water. Um, how can mining companies avoid these conflicts? Mm -hmm. The most important thing in my perspective is to start from listening and, and to begin um, as early as possible in the mine life cycle to understand what the community concerns are around mm. water. I think one of the big problems the mining industry faces in a lot of areas, in particular in water, is a lack of trust. And so trust is built as early as possible through meaningful engagement and honest engagement and unfortunately, um, sometimes we can see that companies might only engage after something's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and that creates, you're already on the back foot, if you like, in terms of trying to create trust and build trust. Mm -hmm. And if done right, can water um, be then a catalyst for trust in other areas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's something that um, is, is starting to be talked about as being, um, you know, by building trust through one example such as water, mm -hmm. it can help with other conversations as well. Um, and I think that, you know, an example of a project that, that some of my colleagues have worked on, you know, the, the Cerro Verde mine in Peru um, is, is a mine that is located very close to the Tia Maria project, which, yeah. will, you know, had a lot of challenges with local communities. But Cerro Verde, um, you know, in very early in, in thinking about the mine expansion and where it would get water from, um, they decided to use recycled municipal wastewater as water supply instead of relying on groundwater mm -hmm. or other water sources in the area. And so um, they wouldn't have identified that as an option for water supply if they hadn't been talking with the local community mm -hmm. to understand um, the concerns they had and also what the options were in terms of where water was being taken from. So I think that um, it can actually broaden the scope of options one might be thinking about if you ask questions early, as early as possible. Now, looking maybe into, well, not that long-term future, but mm -hmm. talking about climate change, mm -hmm. and that is going to exaggerate some water risks. Mm -hmm. We have both flooding and scarcity. Mm -hmm. How is the industry preparing for this? Um, so I, my impression of the kind of climate change discussion is that until recently, um, I would say most of the attention has been on climate change mitigation, thinking about the role of the industry in um, climate impacts. But actually, now I think there's more discussion on climate change adaptation and more importantly resilience to how we think about um, some of the, the ways that mining needs to exist in ecosystems in light of future climate variability. And in relation to water, I think there's two areas that uh, interest me the most. So one of them is um, the data question. So a lot of mines are in really remote areas where there's often not very good historical climate data. So in order to build a model and understand what climate variability is going to be, 
if you don't have good information, it's really difficult to make good decisions. And the other thing that um, is of interest to me is, is also how do we think about designing mine sites so that they're actually more resilient? Mm. So even if we may not have fantastic data, um, how can we design systems differently uh, so that maybe you know, they're more resilient and, and less vulnerable to what the impacts of very high rainfall or very low rainfall events might be. And I think we need to be thinking about this also well beyond the life of mine. So it's mm. not just about kind of the business risks, but the much more important risks are, you know, what's going to happen in 100 years from now, 300 years from now, um, if we think about some of these questions. Talking about all these issues and, and issues today and mm -hmm. future problems, what, what role would technical innovation play in mm -hmm. solving these issues? Mm -hmm. For example, with desalination, will that ever be a feasible solution? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, there are many examples of mines already starting to use desalinated water. Um, Chile is an example of a country where this has really taken off uh, very rapidly in the last several years. Um, and so I think that desalinated water for mines can have a lot of advantages mm -hmm. because it can reduce dependence on, for example, groundwater systems that might be, um, you know, very important for local communities. But I think one of the kind of warnings I have about the technical solutions is that sometimes I think we can imagine that they're going to fix all of the problems mm -hmm. and, and inevitably there's going to be other problems that get created as a result. So if we think about desalination and, and the role it can play in mineral supply, there's a lot of advantages, absolutely. Um, in Chile, the desalinated water is being pumped very long distances and also uphill, up into the mountains. So there's a large energy cost associated with mm. that. And also where to put the infrastructure and, and you know, there's a, still a pipeline that needs to, to be built to transport the water as well as a desalination facility on the coast. Mm. So one of the questions I'm also um, working on in some of my research with my team is about um, how do we design infrastructure regionally to have the minimal impact on communities and the environment. Um, these technological solutions are really important. We need to keep making progress there, but we should also be thinking about the trade-offs that come with each of those steps. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much.